Warning, the Savage Nation contains adult language, adult content, psychological nudity. Listener discretion is advised. And now, America's most exciting radio talk show, The Savage Nation, home of unprotected talk, borders, language, culture, and here he is, Michael Savage. Welcome to The Savage Nation, the number one news talk radio show in the nation with a 27 share compared to Rush Limbaugh's 13.7 share. Poor old Rush. Anyway, the issue is this. We're talking about the news. That's what the show is about. Fundamentally, it's a news talk show. And the biggest story to me of all the stories was the one we covered yesterday was the uh, hero American airman who was stabbed outside a bar in Sacramento in an apparent bar fight. Well, we have sound from the local affiliate, the CBS local affiliate in Sacramento, where a liquor store worker who watched the whole thing said the whole thing appeared to start over a girl and the airman Spencer Stone was stabbed trying to break up the fight and defend her. He said the entire group that stabbed him came from the direction of a club called Badlands, a club down the street, and yet the Sacramento police have not made any arrests. I guess they're afraid to go into Badlands. They're checking their affirmative action handbooks in Sacramento. They're checking their diversity folders. They're checking their rules of engagement. They're checking with Jerry Brown's diversity office if they can see if they can go into the Badlands Club. But let's listen to the news report on the Savage Nation. I was standing out front. Um, I heard an argument going on. So right now we're talking. We're sitting there going, man, I don't even think they're going to fight. They don't want to fight. Obviously, they had left the club together or they knew each other or something. They had been hanging out that before this happened, kind of arguing, kind of him ha fighting, pushing and stuff. But you know, we didn't even think they were gonna fight. And then yeah, and then I started to walk back up in the store, and that's when I just heard a, like a, someone getting hit. And so I turned back around, and the white, the big dude, white guy, stood up and uh, kind of, you know, got in his face. He didn't look hurt at the time. He was walking just, you know, with his arms up, and like you know, just, you know how you are after you get in a fight. I saw the back of his shirt. I saw a big red mark on the back of his shirt, and then there was another. Like, random person walked by, and I was just kind of like, I think the dude got stabbed. What may have surprised Eric even more, the woman got into a car and left, not with Stone, but with the suspects. I thought she was with the white guy the whole time because she was he was sticking up for her, but then she ended up leaving with the Asian guys. Oh, a white guy was stabbed by Asian guys, and Jerry Brown's stooge police in Sacramento haven't said be on the lookout for the, quote, uh, Asians who stabbed a white guy and it's a hate crime? Shame on all of you! You ought to put your badges in a toilet. You ought to throw your guns down a well for as good as you do protecting us from the big lie coming out of Sacramento or Washington for that matter. Well, that's the opening story. And now we go on to the other news of the day on the Savage Nation. Remember, it's Friday, so it's open mic to mic on the Savage Nation, which means whatever topic <clears throat> you care to discuss, if you're lucky enough to get on through the call screen at Jim, you will reach more people than you've ever spoken to and we'll speak to for the rest of your lives. So let's go to the news. Black Lives Leader defends looting in a Yale lecture. We are living in such a debased society that a street vermin called a Black Lives Leader, a street vermin, a rat, a street rat from Black Lives Matter, whatever that means, was invited to teach at Yale as a guest lecturer. Could you imagine what's happened to our universities that they take street scum and turn them into lecturers? This is right out of Mao Zedong's China where they took garbage and turned them into heroes and took heroes and turned them into garbage. So they take the street rat from Black Lives Matter and he's teaching at Yale and he does a, gives an article and a speech in defense of looting. Teaching at Yale in defense of looting. And you should see the white teachers who hired him. All of those useless putzes with their legs crossed. All those sheeple men. Oh, 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 look at the, look at the black activist. Oh, yes, yes, black activist. Yes, looting. Yes, we believe in looting. Yes, yes, that's a, that's a thing. They, yeah, yeah, that's a way to get even with society. Yes, 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 yes. That's the society you're living in. That's your society. I'm not going to blame Barack Obama for it. But he is a symptom of the very same thing. That's how a non-entity like him could have been elected to the, to the presidency to begin with. Who was he? Who was this guy? Nobody. He never even showed up in Congress. He was too lazy to show up in Congress when he was a senator. 
But you made him president. Why? Because you're a white, guilty person. I mean, you'd expect people of color to vote for him, right? Why would people not vet a man like him? And look where we are seven years later. Take a look at it. Take a look at this. So now it gets even better. Uh, your president goes on CBS News with Steve Croft, who's perhaps the last newsman left in television journalism, and he gets angry at Steve Croft, Croft because Steve Croft dare challenge him by saying the world is getting more unstable under this unstable president of ours. You've got to listen to the entire clip one, fire. A year ago when we did this interview, there was some saber rattling between the United States and Russia on the Ukrainian border. Now it's also going on in Syria. You said a year ago that the United States, America leads, we're the indispensable nation. Mm -hmm. um, Mr. Putin seems to be challenging that leadership. In what way? Let, let's think about this. Well, he's moved, let, he's, let, let, he's moved troops into, yeah. uh, into yeah. Syria, for one. Yeah. He's got people on the ground. Right. Two, the Russians are conducting military operations in, in the Middle East for the first time since World War II. So that's so bombing that's, the people yeah. uh, that we are supporting. So that's leading, Steve? The, uh, so let, let me ask you this question. This man? When I came into uh, office. See? Hold it. Hold Stop. Uh, let me ask you this question. Suddenly he's a Talmudic genius. So Steve Croft catches him in his weakness. As I said to you a thousand times, maybe you'll hear me now. Teddy Roosevelt said, talk softly and carry a big stick. Obama's reversed it. Talk loudly and carry a broken limp stick. So now one reporter has the guts to stand up to this fraud, this psychopath in the White House. And he says, let me ask you a question. What he knows the whole world's laughing at him behind his back. But actually, he doesn't know the world's laughing at him behind his back because he is protected by barrier after barrier of sorority girls who doesn't even they don't even let him know what the world is snickering at him behind his back. They see him as a weak and effectual leader. The only guts he has is to attack the American people. The only guts he has to attack the Republican Party, which doesn't even exist. But when it comes to real world leaders on the real stage, Trump made him look like a, excuse me, Putin made him look like a chump. Putin made your president look like the chump he has always been. And so Steve Croft challenges him on it. And he said, well, let me ask you another question. You can't pick it up from there, I'm sure. We have to start, yeah, go ahead, play it from there. Uh, Ukraine was governed by a corrupt ruler who was a stooge like of you? Mr. Putin. Syria a was of Russia's only ally in the region. And right. today, uh -huh. rather than being able to count on their support and maintain the base they had in Syria, which they've had for a long time, you hit Mr. Double Putin now is devoting his own troops, his own military, just to barely hold together by a thread together. his Harvard sole ally. Hour. He's and challenging in Ukraine, your leadership, Mr. President. Yeah, He's no, challenging your leadership. That, that, Steve, I, I, I got to tell you, if, if you think that running your economy into the ground and having Hello? to send troops in in Hello? order to prop up your only ally is leadership, then we've got a different definition of leadership. Can you believe, now you know why Trump is surging in the polls. Because Trump doesn't give you hems and haws and talk for, for 15 to 30 seconds and say nothing. Barack Obama is a skilled rhetorician, which means he's a big fat liar. He learned how to curl, uh, curve his R's at Harvard and give you the big wind job. And that passed for genius amongst the uh, geniuses who put Black Lives Matter into Yale to lecture on looting as the American way. Well, I, I rest my case. That's the opening to the show. The phone number is 855-407-282. It's open mic to Mike Friday. And if you care to talk about any other topic, go ahead, make my day. Let's start in San Francisco on KSFO. Daniel, I almost hit the wrong keyboard. I almost went on to... Daniel, welcome to the show. What's on your mind? Yeah, Michael, I want to talk to you about the uh, Airman Stone incident, the stand that took place in Sacramento. Are you there, Michael? Yeah, go ahead. Do it already. Yeah, anyways, um, I want to talk about that. It's funny how you mentioned that about the sheriff, how they um, said... Um, about the incident, how it's not related to the um, the Paris incident. Well, how do they know, like you mentioned? Wait, 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 hold it. Back. Hold, hold it, hold it, hold it. Hold. Let's back up. It wasn't the sheriff. I just played a tape of an eyewitness, a liquor store owner, who said he was defending a girl. He got stabbed by Asians who came out of a bar down the street, and then the girl left with the Asians who stabbed him. That's the latest report, my friend. Right. And I, you, you know what, Michael? I lived up in Sacramento before I went into ISER. All right. Thanks for the call. 
I'm giving you the latest news. I can't go backwards now and start speculating on what happened. The issue is it's a hate crime. The issue is Jerry Brown is so locked down the state that the police are useless. They're afraid to do their jobs. As brave as they are, they're afraid to do their jobs in the state of California. And I blame the filthy lawyers. Let them all go to hell. The lawyers who have destroyed our police. On that pleasant note, I'll take a break. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. The Savage Nation is sponsored by Swiss America, the only company I trust with my financial future. Call 800-289-2646 or SwissAmerica.com. Leadership is not fanning the flames of intolerance and then acting all surprised when a fire breaks out. Saying clearly inflammatory things and then saying, well, that's not what I meant. Until you do it again and again and again. So we've got to decide whether or not we as Americans are willing to stand up against this kind of bigotry. The anti-immigrant sentiment that has infected our politics is not new, but it is wrong. Can you believe what he just said? The anti-immigrant sentiment that has infected our politics is not new, but it is wrong. Really, Mr. President, let's analyze that. You want to flood America with what? 200,000 illegal aliens now from Syria, Muslim men, mostly military age, not refugees, but really economic uh, refugees, if you want to even call them that. Why are you bringing them into the country? We have no right to stand up to a legitimate border. We have no right to stand up to legitimate immigration laws. When you bust the immigration laws with your arrogance and your illegalities, are you kidding me? It's not anti-immigrant sentiment. It's anti-Obama sentiment that you're disguising as anti-immigrant sentiment because there'd be no anti-immigrant sentiment if you just respected the law and protected our borders, as you are constitutionally supposed to do, Mr. President. But you are a demagogue of the lowest order. You hate people who oppose you and you'll do anything to destroy them. That's how you got where you are so fast. A non-entity like you, a nobody. No track record whatsoever. Look where you are. But you're not through yet, are you? you got things to do. Guns to seize. Immigrants to flood in. Uh, a religion to denigrate. Change the religion. Empty the churches. Do whatever you can, Mr. Obama, before you're gone. And then go on to the world stage after this. Go run the United Nations where you belong. This is unbelievable to me. And there's no opposition party. Wait, it gets even better. This came out a minute ago in breaking news. You know Louis Gutierrez, that slimy reptile? Louis Gutierrez, Louis Gutierrez, who once said that I stand only for immigrants. He says, I have only one loyalty, and that's to the immigrant community. Louis Gutierrez stands only for the illegal aliens, the non-citizens, the criminals who broke into my country. Guess what Louis Gutierrez, the human reptile, just said? He just endorsed Paul Ryan for speaker because Paul Ryan and he agree on amnesty for illegal aliens. Now you got the most radical member of the Democrat Socialist Islamist Party, Louis Gutierrez, telling the Republicans who to make into their own speaker. Can you believe this? Can you believe it's come to this point? Yes, well, who told you it's a one-party system before anybody else? Me, Michael Savage. Who wrote about the one-party system before anybody else? Me, 1994, when I said Democrat or Republican. What difference does it make? What difference does it make, as Hillary Clinton famously said? When you have a Democrat party or a Republican party, as I said when I began in 1994, in radio, 1994 I said it, Republican, Democrat, one-party system, oligarchy, all my terms and phrases articulated in every one of my books, and most particularly now in my new book, Government Zero, where the subtitle says it all, no borders, no language, no culture, meaning we've had a nation-busting administration take over this country. That's right. Now, you're listening to, not a man talking to himself, but a very important man. You're listening to the number one streaming radio show in the United States of America, that is talk radio show, with a, an astounding, unprecedented 27 share. You can dismiss it if you want, but dismiss it at your own expense, because you'll be lying only to yourself. No one's ever seen numbers like this before. And a streaming radio show indicates that a younger audience is listening to this show. 
the very audience that everybody in the radio business covets is tuning into this show.